All right, well, welcome everybody to Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I will tell you we're having a little bit of technical difficulty today, so we did have some slides prepared for you, but we are just going to be on camera today. We aren't able to get those working, uh, but we have a great discussion for you today. So if this is your first time joining us, Home Office Hours is a series of live discussions that we've put together on timely topics, and we'll be featuring guest speakers as well as our very own Vistaprint team members. Our goal with the series is to provide you with education and advice for surviving these unprecedented times during the COVID-19 crisis. We know that small business needs have changed and we wanted to help. So we created home office hours as a way to connect during this time when we're all spending a lot of time at home. So we've tapped colleagues to help answer some of the questions that you're having as business owners. And today we have with us Priya Muthu, who is our social and content marketing specialist here at Vistaprint. Priya, can you uh, say hello? Hi, happy to be here. Hey, thank you for joining us. And we also have Jenny Will with us here today. She's a video specialist here at Google. Jenny, can you say hello? Hi, everyone. Hey, thank you for being with us. So today we're going to talk about utilizing online video in this new business landscape. So before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. If you're in Zoom, uh, you can submit your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen there. And if you're on Facebook, you can just comment your questions there and we'll get those in the Q&A in Zoom. And we will absolutely leave plenty of time at the end for questions. Uh, so please submit your questions all throughout the session and we'll take those at the end. We'll also be sending out the recording after we wrap up. Okay, so let's jump into it. Priya, let's start with you today. So you and I have worked on a number of projects together being here at Vistaprint. So why don't we establish something that we've dealt with, uh, not just with online video, but really with any kind of content, social video or otherwise, and that's the audience. So what are the two big things that we all need to consider about our audiences when we're creating video content? Absolutely. The first big thing is really determining your audience. Are they fitness enthusiasts? Are they foodies? Are they interested in DIY projects or are they parents? It's really important to know which community or group of people is going to be interested in consuming the content that you actually put out there. And then the second big piece is really understanding what your audience is going to be searching for. Are they looking to get healthier? Are they interested in learning how to cook? Do they want to know more activities to do with their kids? You really want to answer the question of what are their main goals? So it can really be helpful to research current trends you can even go to the trending section on YouTube to see what's popular in real time. So the two big pieces are really, who is your audience and what do they want? Awesome, thank you. So important, knowing your audience. So Jenny, can you expand on this for us? What can you tell us about the growth of online videos specifically and, and during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I wanna completely reiterate what Priya shared about audiences. Making sure you're reaching and engage, engaging your audience is critical, and YouTube is a, a key platform to do that. So we actually have 95% viewability and audibility, which allows us um, to be the leader in terms of engagement across the online video ecosystem. YouTube also provides the reach that advertisers crave. With 2 billion monthly logged in users globally, that's more than the entire population of China, USA, and Brazil combined and people are watching more than a billion hours of video per day. That would be enough video to keep you occupied on a flight to the sun and back 3,000 times, which is pretty incredible. We also know that video consumption is on the rise. There are still three basic things that humans spend our time doing, sleeping, working, and watching video. In fact, research shows that by 2021, video will be more than 80% of consumer web traffic. So in this world of nearly infinite choice, video remains one of the world's favorite pastimes and it's still growing. And it's the heart and that the heart of online video is YouTube. And, and lastly, over 90% of consumers say they've discovered new products and brands on YouTube. So it's a great place to make sure that you have brand presence. Right now, unsurprisingly, people are engaging with video more than ever given the unprecedented times we're facing with COVID-19. Nielsen estimates that being homebound could lead to an almost 60% increase in the amount of video content that we watch globally. Um, while there are many video options available, video, YouTube is a video option for everyone, and now more than ever. 
Naturally, this preference for YouTube is reflected in massive year-over-year -year watch time growth of 25%, and in particular, dramatic growth on TV screens of 29%. These numbers are all from the past month. And in a world where many traditional channel channels are losing reach um, or are challenged to develop new content for consumers, YouTube remains number one in terms of ad, our, an ad-supported partner. So are people, as people are spending more time at home and where, where advertisers can reach their audiences is, is evolving, people are engaging more and more on YouTube um, than ever before. That is a lot of time spent watching video, um, but I'm not yeah. surprised that while we're all inside right now that people are watching even more. I think we're all really hungry for content to keep us entertained, so not surprising at all. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, just a kind of a fun fact, too, we've seen a 120 percent increase um, in people looking to learn new skills. So videos like homeschooling or how to cook. So different how to videos and exercise in particular is, is um, really spiking. Yeah, I think a lot of that kind of DIY um, type of content is important right now because the providers that you're used to going to for those services and things like that are not open. So you have to learn to do it yourself. Exactly. So can you talk to us a little bit more about how you would plan and promote your content on YouTube? A couple of questions come to mind, like how can you customize your channel? Uh, I know there are elements like descriptions and titles, tags, keywords, and metadata. How do those different elements help demonstrate your brand's personality on your channel, but also help you get found by viewers who might be searching things like, um, you know, DIY haircuts and exercising at home and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So your YouTube channel is really an opportunity to showcase your brand to a potential customer. So I can walk through a couple of ways how you can optimize your channel and, and really a few just best practices in order to make sure that you're putting out your brand in, in a productive and meaningful way in the YouTube environment. So first, you want to make sure that you're making your channel your your, your own. Um, so at the top of your YouTube channel, you have a banner, a channel banner, um, where you can update a visual image with um, typically um, brands will have their logo or something that relates to their brand in that space. And then you also have an opportunity to put an icon and your business name. So making sure those are up, up to date and all have a consistent look and feel is really important. Absolutely. And just to piggyback off of that, your channel page should really look professional and well thought out. Really think of it like any other social media platform that you might be on, whether that's Facebook or Instagram. You really do want to try to update it as much as possible. Here at Vistaprint, we try to change that featured video on the channel page as often as we can, just so that the page really stays fresh and current. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point. Just jumping um, I, just, I mentioned oh, yeah. the beginning. Sorry. Uh, so I mentioned at the beginning, we did have some great slides for you guys um, that will help visualize some of these tips. We did have some technical difficulties, so we aren't able to pull those up right now, but we'll definitely look into trying to send those out to you after the fact, because there are some great illustrations of what Jenny and what Priya are talking about right now. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thanks, Marie. Um, another helpful tips and tricks in terms of optimizing your channel is around writing a helpful description for your video. So underneath uh, on your YouTube channel homepage, um, you're able to write a description about your company and about the video that you're posting. So make sure you're putting descriptive and searchable content first, and we'll get into that in a second, but you wanna make sure that your customers can find you. And then you also have the opportunity to add extra information and links if needed. If you're talking about something in your video that you link to on a landing page on your site, you can absolutely include that link in, that, in this description area. Definitely. And aside from your actual channel page description, just speaking of descriptions in general, you want to ensure that all of your videos have these descriptions as well. Um, so wherever applicable, actually, within your descriptions, you can even cross promote some of your videos. And this also works especially well to squeeze some additional views out of older content that might need some more love. So you can even promote an older video in your description of a new video that you're releasing if there's some relevancy or connection. So not only descriptions on your channel, but across all your videos as well. Great tips. Absolutely. Um, and then the last point is really around making sure customers can find you. And I touched on this 
briefly in the in the in the previous point, but you want to make sure that you have your content is searchable and that once you upload your video, you want to make sure that you you have the right keywords in your titles and descriptions to make sure that if people are looking for what you're offering, it will come up. Um, so well written descriptions with the right keywords can boost views and watch time by helping your videos show up in search results. Um, a great way to take to look at this is to look at what other brands are doing um, in terms of how they're labeling their videos. I think in, in particular, a couple of, of best in class YouTube channels from big brands are um, the Expedia channel has done a great job and the Patagonia channel. I often advise my clients to take a look at those channels to see what best in class looks like. Thank you. Good. And, and you want to ensure that, yep. And you also want to ensure that these keywords are not only in your titles, but really anywhere that you can put them in your descriptions and your playlists as well. But always remember at the end of the day to choose quality over quantity. You really want to find that right balance, you know, not too little, but not too much that you're actually oversaturating your content. And this whole process, it might take a little bit of trial and error, but you know your content best at the end of the day. So you really will find that happy medium. Absolutely. And another just quick, quick um, tip and based on the trends that we're seeing in the market right now, using common search terms like how to um, will help you connect with more customers, knowing that that's top of mind. And we know that those trends exist and are um, accelerating right now. If you take advantage of, of those different insights, you can help make sure that your videos are found more frequently by the right people who are looking for that type of content. That's great. Um, That's great. Yeah, I would also just add around um, searchable titles. If we're getting into some of the more tactics here, and as Corey mentioned, we'll send out hopefully some examples after this. Um, but we really recommend trying to keep it to 45 characters or less so you can show up more easily in, in searches. That was to Priya's point too, right? Keeping things concise is really important. And then within the title, you also want to identify the content type, right? Is it a tutorial video? A how to, is it a product demo? Making sure you're labeling what the video will talk about is another good way to organize your different types of content. And also, we recommend labeling with brand or series if needed. Um, so, for example, um, if you're a mattress company and you're doing a series on shipping and how the mattress is shipped, you could you could keep all of the all of the labeling within that series consistent so that a consumer can easily follow along and see the next video in the series. Great. And in addition to everything that Jenny has mentioned about those searchable titles, you also don't want to forget about your thumbnails too. Our brains are really wired to see visuals first, so you really want to make sure that your thumbnail is very eye-catching and appealing. And if you have a series, thumbnails are a really great way to visually tie it together and really enhance that perception of a common theme. So try to think of your title and thumbnail as almost a one-two punch. Yeah, I love that, Priya, thank you. I'd also recommend using the video tags feature to help viewers find your content. So really, first and foremost, the, the golden rule here is to keep it simple. So use the tags field during your video upload and include keywords from your title in a mix of both general and specific tags to thoroughly and accurately describe your video. A great way to source different keywords is using Google Trends and Google Ads Keyword Planner. So these tools can help you identify popular keywords and their synonyms. Including these search terms can help maximize traffic from search onto YouTube. Yeah, just emphasizing yeah. that uh, video tags are just different because they help YouTube they help your videos content and also its context as well. And once YouTube is able to understand your video's topic and category, it can then begin to associate it with similar content, which will amplify your video's reach and overall searchability. Thank you guys so much. This is so important. Nobody wants to spend all that time creating video content only to not have it get found by their audience. So I think this is super helpful. Thank you. So Priya, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about promotion and, and cross promotion specifically. You mentioned earlier that you can cross promote other videos on some of some videos that you've posted on YouTube, but your role encompasses more than just YouTube here at Vistaprint and you work on our other social accounts as well. 
So can you explain how you can actually leverage those other social accounts to try and drive people to your YouTube videos? Absolutely. Uh, cross promotion is a really, really great strategy. Basically, as Corey mentioned, just leveraging those existing social platforms and then promoting your video content on these channels. For our webinar, we promote on social the day before, the day of the webinar, and after we've recorded. And this is really a great way to push your content organically without putting any extra spend. So for example, let's say that you have a video planned and you have a pretty strong following on Instagram. You can post your announcements leading up to the release of the video on your stories and on your feed. And once the video has actually been released, you can then upload it to IGTV. And you can do this across Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, really any other social really any platform other social that you might be on. And, and in addition, there are plenty of tools to create of these kind of posts. Uh, Vistaprint even offers our own free social media template tool. But like I mentioned, there are so many resources out there that can really help make this process easier. Awesome. Thank you, Priya. I think it's really important to have that connection too between all of your customer facing platforms it really helps solidify your brand's presence. And I, I think those accounts are also another place to make your call to action. Uh, you, you want to do that in your videos for sure, um, but you can also do it on those accounts. And it's okay to be direct with people, right? You want to make sure you're telling them what you want them to do, you know, whether that's go to your other content or to your website or to donate. Um, you should always include a call to action, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's important to be direct, but you want to be mindful as well. And don't think of yourselves as forcefully or aggressively selling something, but rather you're giving your audience some general direction. As we all know, call to actions, like you mentioned in your examples, Corey, they aren't always about selling. You can ask viewers to subscribe to your channel, watch more videos, or even share it with their friends. So really think of it as giving your audience some guidance on what to do after they've consumed your content. Yeah, and I would just echo Priya's point. Um, one of the tools that YouTube has created for, for you is a, a, a tool called End Cards, and that actually allows you to put a call to action at the end of your video. So you can take advantage of that feature every time you upload a new video. And like Priya said, you can do things where you're directing users to visit a part of your site or subscribe to your channel so that they'll get regular updates about new content that you're putting on YouTube. That's awesome, thank you. Very helpful feature. So Priya, planning is a big part of your job and, and we know, um, as I referenced before, content can take a lot of time to create, a lot of time to plan. So can you take us through the process of how you prepare and how you plan for releasing your content? Absolutely, uh, planning content is super important and it really helps you stay organized. I would say the easiest way is to use some type of a content calendar. I currently use an Excel spreadsheet. It really goes to show you don't need any fancy tools to do this. And it doesn't just have to be for video. It can really be for all of your content, whether that's email or social content as well. But for the purposes of this webinar, stick to video. So once you've figured out the core of your content, it's really important to figure out the cadence. Uh, is it sustainable for you to release a video once a week, twice a week, once a month? That's really something that you have to figure out for yourself. For our webinar, we decided that it was sustainable to do it twice a week. So once you've decided this, really figure out what platforms you're going to be cross-promoting on as well. Prior to the whole COVID crisis, I had about a month to plan the calendar in advance, but given the current situation and how rapidly things are changing, this planning process is condensed into about one to two weeks, but it's overall still the same. Um, you wanna make sure that you're checking your calendar frequently and adjusting according to your schedule as well. If you weren't able to publish something as planned, it's totally fine. You can always move it ahead. And this calendar is just super helpful as a reference guide to keep track of your work. Let's say you want to know how many times you promoted a particular video on Facebook. You can easily use this calendar to you know, check and see how many times you did that. So the calendar is just a great tool to not only stay organized, but really just use as a strategic reference point. Awesome, thank you. And Jenny, I know we were talking earlier that Google has a framework as well. Uh, would you like to share that? I thought that was a really helpful framework. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I couldn't agree more how important it is to have a clear programming strategy. 
Um, you'll need to determine what your channel stands for, produce videos in a consistent voice, and map out a release strategy where that Excel spreadsheet comes in handy, like Priya mentioned. So getting the timing right and giving people a reason to keep coming back to your channel is so important. And one framework that we like to use at Google is called the Hero Help Hub approach. So Hero is the, is the content that you want to push to a big, broad audience. So most likely, you only have a few Hero moments per year. So for example, major product launches or seasonal tent poles that you can use to help push and activate your brand. Hub content is more episodic or multi-part series designed to give a fresh perspective on your audience's passions and interests. This is often staggered throughout the year. I find for hub content, it's really helpful to tap into Google Trends, again, the free tool that I mentioned earlier, to understand what are your customers searching for and what's, what's spiking in relevance right now and try and build hub content around what's most relevant. And then help content is um, the type of video content that answers the questions your consumers are asking to create programming that is always relevant throughout the year. So consider making product tutorials, how-to lessons, or customer service videos, depending on what your product or service offers. This is great guidance. Thank you both. Um, I hope this really helps people in planning out their content. So we've been talking mainly um, in the context of organic video and organic content. So let's shift it over a little bit here. Jenny, it would be great if you can explain to us how a small business can jump into YouTube advertising, especially knowing that most small businesses don't have that professional video capability. Um, they're not engaging an advertising agency to create these videos for them. How can they get started? Yeah, absolutely. And especially in today's current environment when many uh, traditional video services are closed or not in operation right now um, due to COVID, what we've done at Google is released a tool called Video Builder, which is actually a self-service ad production tool that's primarily developed for advertisers who have um, limited bandwidth experience or limited resources to produce a video on their own for a Google ad campaign. So this is a great way to get your feet wet in terms of jumping into the world of YouTube advertising. So by manually populating video layouts with different types of images, for example, product or lifestyle shots from display, print, social media, websites. You can really pull from wherever you have existing assets. Um, put in your branding elements like your logo, brand colors, and then add in messaging or copy, whatever you want your video to say. This tool will then render a YouTube optimized video for you for, absolute, for, for free of charge. Um, so we're really excited about this new feature. Um, if you, if, if we dive deeper into how it actually works, all that you need is different types of images. And again, you can pull from those different channels that you may already have a content on um, and then pull in your brand elements, whether it's colors or logo, and then the messaging and copy and you're, and you're all set. Um, so we, f we found um, an overwhelmingly positive response to this tool so far, and we're really excited to see how we can continue to build on it further. Um, you can find the sign up, sign up form online if you Google video ad builder on YouTube um, and perhaps we can send it out after this webinar as well. But it's very, it's a, it's a quick form. It takes about 30 seconds to fill out and you get access to the tool within five business days. That's great. Thank you. And I love your suggestion. Uh, we can definitely include that in the email afterwards for people if they okay. would like to do that. I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. It sounds like a, I have not used it myself, but it sounds like it would be a really easy tool for someone who doesn't necessarily have like a video creation background. So thank you for sharing. So thank you both so much for, for all of the questions that you've answered so far. Uh, at this point, I would like to turn it over to the audience and, and start taking their questions. So I mentioned before at the beginning, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're joining us in Zoom, and that will submit your question. And then if you're actually joining us on Facebook, you can just add your question in the comments and we'll get that in the Zoom Q&A as well. So I see we have a few questions already. So we'll start with these. Um, Priya, it would be great if you can take this first one here. Can I apply what you've shared today to videos that I've created for other social platforms or are all these tips specific to YouTube? 
Absolutely. Um, a lot of these tips are relevant to really any video content across your platforms. You always want to be considering your audience and what they want. You want to make sure to include all of the video information that you can across any platforms and really focusing on those appealing thumbnails as well. So a lot of this information is really pertinent and applicable to any video content that you might be creating. Awesome. Thank you. Jenny, would be awesome if you can take this next one here about subscribers. Um, do you have any tips to help increase the number of people that subscribe to my YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. And we get this question a lot um, and it's, it's a good one. So I would say a couple of things. One, make the first 10 seconds of your video the most memorable. Um, so 20% of viewers actually drop off within the first 10 seconds of your video. So you want to take advantage of those first few seconds. This is from an organic standpoint, and we also see that hold true um, from a paid, in, paid advertising perspective, where we see the drop-off rate after five seconds. So within paid advertising on YouTube, we use a format called TrueView, and that allows the viewer to skip the ad within after the first five seconds, as many of you have probably experienced in the YouTube environment watching videos. You have the opportunity to skip the ad. So it's so important to capture the viewer's attention up front. Um, and we carry that principle over to organic best practices as well to make sure that people are hooked in the very beginning and actually want to continue watching your video. Um, I'd also recommend using playlists. That feature on, on, the YouTube, on the YouTube channel is so powerful. So do you have a set of videos that could go together or a certain type of series that you could put together? Maybe it's a re reoccurring re weekly educational series maybe it's webinars, kind of like what Vistaprint's doing. If you can put all those together in a playlist, it makes the content that much more powerful and relevant and will encourage users after they watch one video to stay around and watch a few more. And additionally, if it's something that's happening on a weekly or, or a reoccurring basis, if they subscribe to your channel, they'll get an, an email update anytime a new video is posted. Um, and then I'd also recommend adding um, call to actions to your videos. So we touched on this a little bit earlier, but one of the call to actions that you can add within a YouTube end end screen is to increase to add um, to to subscribe now. So that helps increase your subscriber count significantly as well. Um, and then lastly, just in, invest in your videos. Um, so there's opportunities to get involved from a paid advertising standpoint too for from a very low amount from the beginning, but you can also encourage um, additional traffic and subscribers that way as well. Perfect. Thank you. So helpful. Um, let's stick with you, Jenny, actually, for this next question. Um, so we just talked about subscribers. So kind of in keeping with that theme, uh, we can talk about views. So our next question is, I've spent so much time and effort creating videos that aren't getting many views. How can I boost them? Yeah, it's such a good point. And similar to the subscriber question as well, I think a lot of the, the points that I just mentioned are still relevant in terms of um, the, this view question. But the, the difference here is making sure that your YouTube videos are, are findable, right? Making sure people are actually able to find and search for and access your YouTube videos, that will really increase your view count. Um, I think one of the best strategies here is to have a cohesive approach across all of your different media channels. So if you're creating a new video and you have a blog, for example, post about the new video upload in the blog, maybe then share the blog post on Twitter or Facebook or other social channels that you might be using. Um, really when all of these platforms work together, that's when you have the best result. I think making sure you have a consistent look and feel across all of those different channels is also so important in terms of branding. And then lastly, I mentioned this with the subscriber count as well, but paid promotion is, is a really effective way to get more video views um, as well. And you can, again, start out small, build up. There's you know, complete flexibility in terms of how you'd want to execute that type of strategy. Great, thank you. And I think a lot of that goes back to the point from before um, about cross-promotion on all those different platforms. And just to add on to that, um, you also, if you really are, you know, your goal is to get more video views, make sure that your call to action is also pointing people to maybe watch your other videos so you can increase yeah. that overall view count. Yes, absolutely. And that's absolutely. also just the point if, around playlists too. If you have a sort of series of relevant content, it's more likely that 
a customer is going to watch additional videos because they're already plugged into that series or they're interested in, in what it is you're talking about. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Thank you. Um, so we talked a little bit about trying to hook your viewers right away in those first few seconds. Um, but talking about the overall video, Priya, can you take this one? What is the ideal video length? Sure. So this is kind of like the million dollar question, I feel. Um, you know, it gets asked a lot and there are lots of numbers out there, but really, you know, it depends on the actual type of content and where you're going to be sharing it. So, um, you know, let's, let's take YouTube. A key consideration is really how long people are actually watching your video. So let's say that you upload a 15 minute video, but people are dropping off at about five minutes, which means that they're only watching a third maybe consider shortening your video next time and see if people still drop off at, at that five minute mark or if they watch the entire video. So basically you want to show YouTube that your audience right. is watching most of your video and not just dropping off a third or halfway through. So this process does take a little bit of trial and error to figure out what's going to be that ideal length for you, but there really is no like hard cut solid answer on the ideal video length because it just, depends on, like I mentioned earlier, really the type of content and where you're going to be sharing it. Yeah, there are so many different factors. Um, but I like your point about letting the data guide you and really watching what your audience is doing. Jenny, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would just jump on in on the data point. I, I really couldn't, couldn't back that up more and that it's so important to understand how your videos are performing on your channel and YouTube actually offers a free tool called YouTube analytics. Um, essentially allows you to understand how your videos are performing, how your, your consumers are interacting with your video. Um, so you have an overview tab that shows you all of the key metrics for your channel. So it shows watch time, views, subscribers, um, and you'll get to see a number of different reports. Um, so right around top videos, which are your videos ranked by views, uh, real-time activities, so your performance over the last 48 hours or 60 minutes, depending on what view you want to look at, and then um, data around your latest videos, so your performance on your, your 10 most recently uploaded videos, as well as just a typical performance overview. Um, so a comparison of your latest video to your channel's typical performance. This is a great way to understand how your video is resonating with your customer base. So to Priya's point, if you're uploading a 15 minute video and you realize that users are, are dropping off after the first five minutes, which you can see through YouTube analytics and looking at the retention curves, then you might want to start playing around with shorter form content and maybe post a five minute video and see if you're able to capture users' attention for longer. That's great. I think the headline that I'm getting from that is there is a ton of data out there that you could easily access mm -hmm. that will guide you in that decision of how long your videos specifically should be because there is no one number for everybody. Thank no, you. absolutely. And it's, it's all free too. So it's, it's a great tool to keep, um, you know, keeping your toolkit. We love free. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> All right, so um, our next question here, um, kind of a two part question, and I'm guessing that you get particularly um, the second part a lot, although I'm thinking the first part is probably pretty common too. Um, Jenny, Willow, if you can start us off on this one, what are the elements of a good video and is it okay that I shoot it on my iPhone? Yeah, that's a great question. So especially in in the current environment, right, we're getting this this type of question a lot. So. What I recommend doing is check out some of your favorite YouTube creators. Go to different channels that you personally enjoy watching, whether maybe that's a cooking show or an exercise video or whatever it may be that you're watching on YouTube. Take a look at your favorite creators and understand what they're doing on their channel because they're essentially running a small business as well. So that's first and foremost in terms of getting different ideas of how to create these videos, especially during this time. Um, I think it, the most important thing is to, to make sure you're capturing attention in the beginning. So again, we've talked about, we've talked about this a little bit throughout, throughout the program today, but making sure that you're hooking users is so important to get them to continue watching your content and understand your message. In terms of filming on your iPhone, 
that is, that is totally fine. Um, and it can often feel like a really authentic and um, authentic experience for your viewer and your consumer. I think the most important thing is that you want whatever you're putting on your channel to be, um, it's, it's essentially a view of your brand, right? So it needs to be consistent with your brand tone and feel. And if you can accomplish that through a selfie video or setting up your iPhone to capture a specific moment, that's absolutely fine. Um, and again, take a look at what your favorite creators are doing because everyone's everyone's working on, you know, sort of constrained resources right now. And we're seeing some really creative things coming out of this time. Yeah, I think that's a great point, um, particularly now even people who had more sophisticated equipment and resources before just might not have access to them now. So we're seeing a lot of brands, a lot of creators get really creative and I think even more authentic and, and you're getting that kind of real honest view um, into the brand and businesses and the creators' lives. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So Priya, I know that we have some of this content here um, for Vistaprint, so I'll throw this question to you. I've already shared tutorial videos for my clients and I was wondering if you had suggestions of other types of video content that can drive engagement for small businesses. Definitely. Uh, video content is sort of like a plethora. There are so many different types of, you know, video content out there. So aside from tutorials, you know, you can think about Q&A sessions, maybe a behind the scenes, um, even quick short tip videos, or even a live stream. I think really at the core of it, at the core of it how to ensure that your video content your is super genuine and authentic. And also really consider the platform that the video is going to live on. Because as we all know, certain types of content perform better on certain platforms. You see a lot of long form videos on YouTube, but maybe Facebook and Instagram, we see you know, more shorter videos. So really consider where the content is going to live and your audience on that platform. But really anything that shares your story that's kind of genuine and authentic and in line with your brand voice, I think will work. Thank you. So I just want to call out, I know that we have one more question right now. So keep them coming. Um, if we don't have additional questions coming in, we might wrap up early for today, but we do still have time. So if you have a question, submit it in in the Q&A, or if you're on Facebook, put it in the comments. So our the last question we have here right now, um, this is definitely a hot button topic. So Priya, how should I handle responses and feedback once my videos are live? Honestly, like you would any other social media channel, you want to make sure that you're responding to as many comments as you can, whether they be both positive or negative, and that you're really taking into, you know, into consideration any feedback or suggestions that you get. After all, this is coming from your audience. So, you know, really, if you can apply one of their, you know, criticisms or uh, comments that they have, really try your best to take that input in and apply it where you can. Yeah, I think taking that feedback and trying to use it constructively is really mm -hmm. important. So it can absolutely be a big opportunity. So I don't see any additional questions right now, but I'll give everybody a couple more minutes. Um, we usually end these by asking our panelists for their final thought. So I am going to um, ask you for your final thoughts. And if you still have a question, um, go ahead and take this time to pop it into the Q&A. Otherwise, uh, we're going to wrap up for the day. So Priya, what would you say your key takeaway is from today's conversation? So I know I feel like everyone's heard this a million times now, but really emphasizing on you know quality versus quantity. Um, like Jenny and Corey, we've all discussed, you know, we want to keep it concise and simple, but really make sure that you are, you're focusing on quality and not just, you know, the, the quantity. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's definitely important. And Jenny, how about you? What would, what would you say is your key takeaway for today? Yeah, I would say just get started. So there's so many helpful resources available online to guide you through this process. And you'll learn so much just by actually getting your channel set up and posting different videos. Understanding how your audience reacts um, is, is really the best way to, to move forward in my, in my opinion. And the best part about digital videos, you get that feedback loop and data in real time. So you can constantly adjust 
and edit based on what's resonating with your customer base. Awesome, thank you both. And we did have one more question come in. Um, so this Great. one is about views and analytics. Um, Jenny, would be awesome. Um, Jenny, would be awesome. Um, Priya, um, you may something to weigh in on here. You're just reading the question now. It covers a little bit of YouTube and Facebook. So when sharing YouTube videos on Facebook, are the views still counted on YouTube analytics? Jenny, do you know that? I'm um, just looking at the question right here. Um, yes, so it depends on where you're looking in YouTube analytics and maybe we can share a screenshot of exactly where you would find that. Um, but they, you are able to see different uh, different metrics by um, where they're coming through based on different social channels. Thank you. And Priya, have you have you executed on this um, for us at Vistaprint? Do you have any knowledge um, on your side if you've been able to see this? Yeah, uh, just to Jenny's point, being able to see the various traffic sources um, is pretty helpful within the actual analytics tool. So, you know, I am able to see when we, let's say, post our webinar on Facebook, how many um, uh, on the YouTube analytics tool, how many are actually coming from our uh, Facebook post versus the video that we actually published on YouTube. So it's, it's just a really helpful way to keep track of that data and see maybe if, you know, more people are watching your video on Facebook versus when you actually just upload it on YouTube. So it can really help make some good data-driven decisions. Perfect. Thank you. Right, well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so we are going to wrap it up for today. Thank you both so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, and to our audience, we're going to be hosting these every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we're covering various relevant topics. And to Priya's point about feedback before, we absolutely want all of your feedback on what topics we should cover, what you're finding most valuable about this, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. So we have included a link at the end of the webinar and we also send it out in the follow-up email. Please take just a couple of minutes, fill that out, let us know what you want to hear and how we can make this better for you. You can also send any questions that you might have or topic suggestions to homeofficehours at vistaprint.com. And you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. We post there, as Priya mentioned, about upcoming webinars. And you can absolutely comment on those posts as well and give us feedback on topics that you'd like to see. So you can find more information in the meantime as well on a lot of these topics uh, if you head to vistaprint.com and check out the support small business stuff. So I uh, will wrap it up now for today. Priya, thank you very much for joining us. And Jenny, thank you as well for being with us today. Uh, this has been Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank everybody for your curiosity and your time. <laughs>